Secondly, the guy who's in charge of production was, went to work 40 years ago when this was the only device available. So he loves this device. It makes him feel secure. There's a new device which will only select out white beads, but it's different. And so he's no longer on the line, so he doesn't feel the pain of your failure, so he doesn't buy the new device because he doesn't get it. Do you begin to see how this fits together into a pattern? You're part of a system. This, this, the quality of the beads, the instructions. I mean, we could have said, reach in here, put, use your hand, get up only white beads and fill this, which would be a, a process change. Yeah. But do you, see the, do you see the pattern? So lots of ways to solve it. But to solve it, you have to recognize you're part of a process. And you have to understand how you fit together. So that in the original Deming model, this being, remember, this is the organizational structure. You're down here under manufacturing, right here. Over here is purchasing. Here is advertising, and here's direct sales. So advertising is saying, we're going to offer only white beads. You keep telling them, no, no, offer 90% white beads. They're saying, we can't offer 90% white beads because you can't compete in the world market with only 90%. Purchasing's going, we've got to keep our costs low. Let's buy the cheapest possible supplier. You're then forced to manufacture with an obsolete process. You are not allowed to improve. Then the sales force goes out and offers 90% white beads, which is what you told them is the most you could do in the current system. But the customer sees the ad for 100%, looks at the lot they just got, which is 90%, and goes to the head of the corporation who wants to know of these four guys, why are you failing? Now, the, the Deming model is radically different. On that model, on the previous model, on the classic hierarchy, shouldn't the guy at the top be responsible for, for looking at, at all this? The guy at the top should be responsible for setting the vision and general strategies and defining a culture of the system which allows every person to participate in going in the direction of the common vision. But can't possibly, in fact, know these things. It's too big a system. OK? No surgeon can clean a, an operating room as well as the best person they hire who's done it for 20 years and really cares about their job. And if the surgeon starts trying to micromanage the janitor who's cleaning the room, you're going to kill people. Okay? So you want every person to do brilliantly their job and to redesign and own their job within the general vision set by the person in charge. This person's job is to, first of all, focus on the customer, focus on the inventions of the future. They just invented the phonograph or the movie or whatever it was Edison was doing. How does this change our world? How does it change our product? Our customers are changing. Alfred Sloan went out once a quarter and spent one week as a salesman on a lot. Head of the largest industrial corporation in the world, sold cars one week every quarter. Why? Because he wanted to know what questions the customers were asking. Because he wanted to have a real finger spitzing of fuel, is a German phrase, fingertips. He wanted to know what was happening in the marketplace at a better level than his pollsters could tell him. OK? Remember Drucker's point. You're always looking for the change in the pattern. You want to, what, what are they doing that's different? What's happening out there that's unusual? Now, Deming's point is that you first have to have an aim. And you've got to develop really thinking through that aim. You do con consumer research. You design and redesign. You receive and test the materials coming in. How many red beads are there in our raw material? You then talk to the suppliers, because you ideally want to get a supplier who's going through the same process you are. And you say to the supplier, we want you to be our supplier. How can we work together so you won't produce any red beads? Which means you suddenly, instead of just looking for the cheapest supplier, you begin to build a relationship where they've got to know what you're doing. So you call the office, you call the supply company and say, no, no, we're not doing restaurants, we're doing operating rooms. We need to buy from you appropriate things for an operating room, not appropriate things for a table in a restaurant. Then you produce, assemble, and inspect, and you test all these things constantly. And then it gets to the consumer and it comes back around. But it's a constant process, and you need to be thinking all the time about the totality of the process. 
Okay? Now, and this is something you can do anywhere. I mean, you all can do this. This is not, this is not a hard experiment to set up. And it's very useful because it's only when you get people into doing it for a while. And again, Deming took 40 hours, 10 hours a day for four days, to, to immerse people in what I'm giving you a hint of. You're only getting a hint today. Because you really have to be able to feel this and, and get the rhythm of this. And think about how isolated you feel. And then ask yourself about a typical government worker or a typical school teacher or a typical anybody in a classic system where you're told, do your job and keep your mouth shut. And what they want to do is say, wait a second, what is our aim? What are we trying to accomplish? And I mean, apply this thinking to learning. Yes, sir. You envision the union's response to the scenario we just experienced, but what about the stimming model? What is the union response to it? Well, the unions are confused by it. I mean, and, and increasingly willing to work with it because they see the pressure of the world market. But remember, the union response was a response to Taylorism. It was a response to the idea that we're going to sub-optimize your job and we're going to brutalize you into a dehumanizing job with no power, no control. You know, do the white beads or else. And that's why you got all the union work rules. It was a response to Taylorism. And now you're saying to people, we want you to be a complete person. We want you to completely understand where we're going and we want you to, we want you to have complete authority for you to help be creative in redesigning your part of the process. Very different model. And places like Ford are unionized. I mean, they go through lots of dialogue trying to find a way to break through, try to talk with each other. Try to, it's very, the cultural change is enormous. It's not just a management change. It's a cultural change. Now, what you've got here is, let's go back and start at the beginning. Principle number one, the consumer, not the bureaucracy, defines value. This is very important for this reason. You've got to define the consumer. Okay? If I can go back to the, to the notion of flowcharts, um, where, where did the uh, eraser go? Oh, there it is. Okay. What I want to show you is normally in most large systems, who's defining value? At the welfare office, who defines value? The bureaucracy. Right. The head of the welfare office, right? So it's downward. Okay? In a normal hierarchy, I'll just do a simple one. You're down here working, right? Here is your customer. In a normal hierarchy, this person's defining value for you, right? I don't care what you, the customer, want. I care what my boss wants. But in a flow chart, And here's the customer. You should be feeding back into the system. This is what I'm hearing. This is what we need to change. This is how we can improve it. Um, this Deming model, if, if we make this, if our civilization makes this move towards this Deming model and we pass out responsibility to the workers, will it render the unions as we know them today obsolete or yeah, the unions as they are today are obsolete. The unions today have to reinvent themselves. Well, is there any place for the union in sure. this model? Sure. In a very big system where it is more efficient for you to organize yourself so you have one person who studies the whole system than it is for you to try to do it yourself. 